Hello, this is John Cato, 30 Minute Trading and FXProfitLab.com. Just want to give you a quick overview on various aspects of trading, which this trade calculator will help you with. Uh, the first thing you have to do to use it is to make a decision about how much risk capital you're going to be using to trade with anyway. Um, never use money that you cannot afford to lose. Do make sure that you've paid off any debts that you have before you start to trade. This is uh, relatively high risk business so you have, to, you have to be very very careful. You have to plan what you're going to do and you have to do it with extreme care. So all the standard disclaimers that you will have seen at the interim of this video apply and be very very careful is all I can say. Uh, having said that, if you do the right thing you can do very well from trading so there's uh, two sides to every coin right let's just start here about risk uh, you may well have seen some of this before but let me just explain it to you again let's suppose that your pot size is ten thousand now that might be ten thousand dollars or ten thousand pounds or ten thousand euros um, whatever your your local currency is you know Singapore dollars whatever now so you've got ten thousand that you have available and 10,000 is a reasonable amount of money. You may decide to trade with less than that, or you may tr decide to trade with more than that. And of course, that's down to you and your own financial situation. Let's just start off with a basic idea that you can win 50% of the time and lose 50% of the time. And if that's true, then the mathematics of it says that in 10 trades, you will most likely get 3.3 trades wrong consecutively and uh, what you need to care about is of course is how many trades you get wrong consecutively because that will be your maximum drawdown in any one given period of time um, and maximum drawdown is what you have to recover to get back from those losses in order to move forward and make profits again so that's a very important number of course if you're going to trade 10 trades is not very many. You'll do more than 10 trades. You'll easily do 100. You may well do 1,000 if you're going to be doing trading. So this means that these numbers are actually very important as well. Here we have, with 100 trades, you will get 6.6 .6 trades wrong. And of course, you can't do 6.6. .6. It's either going to be 6 or it's going to be 7. Same as it can't do 3.3. .3. It's either going to be 3 or it's going to be 4. And if you do 1,000 trades, then the maths say that you're going to get 10 trades wrong in a row. So the maximum drawdown after a thousand trades is going to be down at this level here. It's going to be around, well, it's going to be 10 exactly. So this is this number here. Okay, so that is the overview of how many trades you're likely to get wrong in a row in any given period of time if you're getting 50% right and 50% wrong. The, uh, the opposite case is also true, to be fair, that um, you will get three or four trades right in a row. Uh, that's the, just the maths of it, it's the probabilities of it. But right now we have to concern ourselves with the losses because it's the losses that you need to recover from, it's the losses that are likely to cause concern and stress a trader out. So that's the most important thing. Um, if you aim to get more profit out of a winning trade than you do out of a losing trade, then uh, then you know that's basically the way you want to go however let's just stay with the risk management which is absolutely crucial to staying trading staying in the game i've heard a lot of people say things like um well, i remember going to a trading course some 10 years ago or something like that where they said that you should risk probably three four or five percent of your capital if i put five percent in here then 5% of my capital tells me that I can risk 500 units of currency on any given trade. And that means, as a result of that, that after 10 trades, I am likely to be down this far, remember? And that means that I need to recover 22.77% or 16.64% to get back to break even. Now this is a massive challenge. Most traders can't do that very easily. Also, it's an emotional challenge. Let's say that you're down that far. You now have lost, effectively, 22.77% of your money. Really, what you've lost is 18.55, but you need to be able to recover 
22.77 to get back to break even. That's simply because uh, your pot size is now smaller down to this level here and to get back to the original 10,000 it will take that much percentage of profit improvement. Uh, for most traders when they get knocked down this far that makes a certain amount of stress in the way in which you trade and it means that people will then trade with less prudence and less discipline and the knock-on effect of that is you're probably going to lose again and that will mean you'll knock it down again so all in all this is just not a good idea so let's suppose you change your risk to three percent which you'll know a lot of uh, trading courses will tell you you can trade up to three percent and again it's it's a major issue and we look here in a hundred in a thousand trades you'll go down to this level here even with three percent Going back to the 5%, that would have probably just about wiped you out. So, you know, just game over, really. But still here, this is still a massive risk. To get back from there is quite hard. And you'll probably do 100 trades. So you'll be going down to this level here. You'll have to go take your capital down to from 10,000 to around 8,000. That means that you'll have to make 23.77% profit in order to get back to break even. And if you went through and did a thousand trades at some point, you're likely to do a drawdown that will take you down to 7,300 and you have to get 35% to get back. This calculator then allows you to make decisions about how much you personally want to trade. Now for me, I put in here 0.9. Now that may seem very prudent and cautious, and it is, um, but what that basically means is that even in 100 trades, I've still got less than 10% to get back to break even if I'm disciplined and do proper trade management. Now, you may find that when you're trading, of course, that you'll be able to up your win ratio. And that's something you need to monitor and recognize what your personal win ratio is. Now, of course, it might be 55%, in which case you may find that you can move your numbers up a bit more. So you might be able to say, well, 55%, I want to stay up here in this level here so now these are the percentages that you get for the number of losing trades in a row and of course that improves the situation so it's now gone down to three for this one here and six here and nine there so that might mean that you can up this to 1.1 let's have a look and see now that's still a bit steep look we're very close to the edge here so i wouldn't even go up to 1.1 even if i'm doing that so one percent so 1% would be the, the kind of number that I would suggest that you'd be considering. Now, of course, the calculator is here for you to use so that you can make your own decisions on that. If you turned up to 60% here, you might find now that you can go up to 1.1% in there, and there you have it, yes. All right, so if you find that your win ratio is 60%, then you can actually increase your risk per trade to 1.1%. So going back to what I do, I keep my risk to 0.9% and I calculate my trades on that basis. And uh, depending on how I feel, I may take a trade which would be risking less than that 0.9%. But I keep that as my maximum and don't over trade with it. So the next thing that is worthwhile talking to you about is the market overview. This is the market overview and on here you can see that I've copied through the same figures, the 10,000 original capital. It just makes the round numbers easier to explain. The 0.9% on the risk, which means the risk on any trade is 90 units of currency. Um, and uh, this then helps you work out various things about it. This converts your current account currency to trading currency. So let's say that your account currency was dollars. Then you put in there the euro dollar exchange rate if you're trading euros and it will tell you the pip value uh, depending on where you live in the world you know that may be significant to you and that might not it also depends on the trading platforms you use and so forth so that's down to you um, any questions on that of course email me I'm very happy to talk to you about it we can have a Skype call and have a chat about it right next thing I need to talk to you about then is about making money and making money comes down to what are you going to trade now, a lot of things uh, may seem obvious. You just trade, you know, whatever currency you fancy or 
you trade stocks or you trade whatever you like really um, and of course that seems very obvious and very straightforward um, and, and for many years I didn't even consider this but when I sat and thought about it uh, in much more detail I came up with the conclusion that you had to be very careful about what asset classes you're going to trade and the reason is the spread and the amount of pips that that particular asset is likely to move in a given period of time um, and that is measured by the average true range and the average true range is a uh, indicator you'll find on many platforms on MT4 there's an average true range indicator um, and I suggest you set it to 10 periods what that means is it takes the range of every given period of time so a candlestick or a bar chart um, or even just a line chart is the period that it moves in any given period how far a, um, a price action will move and uh, it basically goes back over the last 10 periods sums for each of those periods the range of every given period and then divides it by 10 to come out with an average true range of each period now periods uh, as a trader you'll know obviously that periods can be weekly they can be daily they can be four hourly hourly 30 minutes and any other period you like really down to one minute now for the purposes of working out the best assets to trade I'm not considering anything lower than 30 minutes for making those decisions uh, as a personal preference and I suggest that you do the same because after that the noise gets to be extraordinarily large and um, the potential for making profits out of lower time scale trades is increasingly smaller I'll explain to you a little bit more about why now let's just go through each one of these assets I've got listed here for example at the top I've got gold and I've made my personal note here that it's closed um, for the trade broker that I use it's closed between 2215 and 2300 GMT um, so I need to know that because that means during those particular periods of time if I'm trading through that period of time I'm not going to be able to do anything in that period of time so that's a potential trading risk and you need to know that um, the spread is the difference between the buy price and the sell price the bid and the offer and um, essentially that means how much the the trade is going to cost you immediately so the moment you get in if you went straight in and straight out it would cost you five pips and if you were trading with say a dollar a pip or a pound a pip or a euro a pip or whatever that means that of course that you're going to it's going to charge you five euros or five dollars or five pounds and so on for just entering the trade so the next question is what's the likely movement that you're going to get on any given period of time because if you're trading that particular asset in any direction you want you're expecting in any given in any given candle a certain movement of pips and you want to recover the spread within one candle and ideally you need to recover the spread very comfortably within one candle which means you can move your stop to break even very quickly which means that you're protecting your risk immediately um, and again there's a whole bit on how you would actually do that uh, what's the best strategy for that and that's a separate conversation so here we have the spread of 0 0.5 it's open 24 hours a day except for the period that it's closed it's the symbol for gold is XAUUSD when I entered this data it was reading 1155 as the price of gold and here are values for what I call the bull bear butterfly indicator which is part of my proprietary trading system my code that uh, I have clients using and essentially it gives you an idea about the bullishness or the bearishness or how much butterflyness it has in the trade now essentially 
this color codes it so when it's red it's bear and when it's green it's bull and when it's white it's butterfly and down here you'll see things which are amber and that means that it's moved out of the very neutral zone of butterfly into the potential bear zone or into the potential bull zone depending on what number this is if it's a negative number it's bear if it's a positive number it's bull now you want to trade with the trend so my software allows you to see what it is for each different period of time weekly daily four hourly one hourly and 30 minutes gold on this particular day on a weekly chart was bear on a daily chart was undecided butterfly that means it can flip from one to the other I call it butterfly because butterflies flip around a lot uh, butterflies know where they're going uh, but as an observer you probably can't tell and that's very much the same with the stock market or the currency market or the ind indices it's all the same so anyway that was a butterfly there and then from the four hour point of view it was bull so we were going short here we were undecided here we were going long here and on the one hour we we're undecided and on the 30 minute we were going bear again essentially a bit of a mess best to leave that completely alone when it looks like that so just let's move on and find something that doesn't look like that now we come down here and you can see that the Australian index at that time on the weekly was minus 8.75 that means it's bear and then that's bear and that's bear and that's bear and that's bear so that particular time the Australian index was a good asset to be considering trading now of course the Australian index prime time is between 1 in the morning and 7 in the morning GMT which is not ideal for myself because I live in Britain um, and this is the spread here which is 1 okay so let's just follow through this column anyway from the point of view of actually talking around it so this makes it a, a good candidate for shorting on that particular day and let's further look at the average true range from a weekly point of view the average true range was 200 pips and from a daily point of view it was 110 and 57 on the four hour 40 on the th one hour 36 on the 30 minute from that I calculate a value which I call the inherent reward to risk ratio the IR and this tells you if it's a big number that the amount of money in the trade with respect to the pips and the average true range is strong and strong enough for you to be able to get into the trade and get a relatively small move before you get to be able to break even now that's obviously important because it means that your probability of getting to a position where you're safe is much higher when this is true let's have a look at some more of these numbers here and you can see that on a daily it's still 109 that's good I come along here and we go all the way through and you can see that on a four hour it's still 55 and on a one hour it's 39 and on a 30 minute it's 35 this makes it a very good asset to trade during its core trading hours because the inherent reward to risk ratio is strong so if I'd seen that set up on that particular time I'd know I'd be aiming for a short trade and I know that on any of these time periods I'd be happy to take that trade and look towards having a favorable outcome with regard to inherent reward to risk now some things as you can see go amber when we come down here so this is the Aussie CAD and you can see here again that on the weekly we're bear butterfly bear 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 good candidate but we are amber on the trade and especially as we come down to the lower time frames you can see this number is six 
Now that means that the probability for the inherent reward to risk ratio is down at a level of 6 reward to 1 risk. Now that's still quite good, but it's definitely not as good as what we were just looking at up here, where we've got 35. And for example, if we look at the DAX, um, there that's 19. And if we look at the Dow, the S&P actually, the S&P 500, it's 41. Okay, so what you're looking to do is finding assets that actually work for you. And you need to make clear for yourself, for each individual asset, what the spread is and what the average true range is and therefore what the inherent reward to risk ratio is. You also need to know whether you're trading with the trend or not because if you trade with the trend then you're much more likely to make money. For each of these you can set what you consider to be green level trades and amber level trades by changing the values up here. Now I'm fairly aggressive on this. I want to trade the, those assets which are most likely to give me a favorable outcome and give me a favorable outcome more easily. So I set these all up like this. You can change them to anything you like um, and that's entirely up to you. For example, I could change this to 10 in there and you can see other assets go green in this column because then they are within the criterion. However, if you leave it at 17, you eliminate more assets from your list of candidate trading assets, which is a good thing. The more you reduce your assets down to those that are going to give you the best returns, the better it is. And to give you some idea about what this means if you're trading stocks, if I was trading stocks and I come down through through all this level here, you can see all these different assets. Um, and I've separated it out. These are automatically propagated from above. So you can see, well, at that particular day, the Aussie was very much bear. And on that particular day, the yen was very much bull. Um, the euro was a bit mixed. The pound was a bit mixed. The dollar was definitely mixed. With regard to the Aussie, it was bull. But with regards to everything else, it was bear. So on that particular day, actually, looking at this, then the yen was strong and the Aussie was weak. So an Aussie yen trade would be a prime candidate and that would be one of these. And the question is here, do the Aussie yen pairs fit within this criterion? And for a four hour chart and the one hour chart and the 30 minute chart, they do. So you want to trade that on the right time frame and if you look about through here you can see that also it was bear 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 so on this particular day the Aussie yen was would have been your hot favorite to trade short and you could have traded it comfortably on any of these time frames the four hour the one hour or the 30 minute now as you can see on this particular uh, asset the difference between the 30 minute and the one hour in terms of how many reward pips you're going to get in that period of time an average period of time is not much different so therefore the 30 minute is a high candidate for trading so I hope that makes sense to you and is useful to you right let's move on now we're going to look at trade risk management here I have a complete calculator system, again with the original 10,000 in here, you put the numbers in there, the amount you're risking in there. If you have to deal with currency conversion, you deal with it up here and you can do that uh, and work out what that is. Um, down here we have the asset, so in here if you're going long, you want to be putting details of the asset in here, so that would be the entry price, your stop price price where you think your stop should be and target one and target two um, 
in here you put in the average true range of the candle that you are particularly interested in trading and then here it will calculate your inherent reward to risk ratio uh, you should already know that because before you even attempt to think about trading some of these you need to make sure that they are the right order of magnitude then with this ATR um, this calculator calculates for you based on the ATR a reasonable stop price a reasonable target one a reasonable target two so you can pay attention to those or you can pay attention to the ones that you've worked out for yourself within here you can put in the margin so you understand how much margin it's going to be and then this calculator will calculate for you the maximum risk per pip so in this case if this was the trade it would say that based on your entry price and your stop price then the maximum risk per pip would be 7.85 um, and that would be 7.85 minis okay so this is not lots this is minis and um, down here if you worked it out on the basis of the ATR and the suggested stop here based on ATR then you could go up to 11 minis now here you can enter what you actually plan to do of course you don't need to trade that or that you can trade a different number in this case for example 8.73 I don't know why I chose that but there you are you can put whatever you like in there you may decide to be very prudent you may say well actually 11 is obviously higher than 7.85 I'm going to trade say 7 so I can click on 7 and put that in there and it will now tell me exactly the detail of the trade so here we have 7 minis and here that would be the same as 0.7 lots or 70 micros and down here that means your risk value in this particular case would be 80.2 of your currency units risking 0.8 percent of your trading account the margin required would be 397 units of your currency and the position controlled would be 70,000 and then down through here it does other details it tells you your risk pips um, and your risk value your risk percent your reward pips on T1 reward pips on T2 reward value on T1, reward value on T2 and the risk to reward ratio on T1 and down here the reward percent for T1 is 0.62 percent and the reward value for T2 is 1.6 so that would be a 2 to 1 reward to risk ratio uh, you can actually put in here your own personal view on probabilities if that makes any difference to you so therefore that you can modify your position size on the basis of that and then down here you have your results and you're able to put in the details of what you actually did in these columns down here along with commentary and then you can copy your chart in down here if you want it off the screen now the same thing applies to shorts which are the other side this column here all of the same works exactly the same principle um, if you know that you can see much more clearly what you're going to get out of this particular trade in this particular case if that trade were to work out in your favor you would increase your uh, capital your pot size by 1.6 percent now clearly just one trade a week increasing your pot size by 1.6 percent is actually going to give you close to a hundred percent return per annum this is an absolutely huge amount which actually brings me back to another point that you should really only look for the best best trades you only want one fantastic trade a week and you can make this amount of money and in fact by experience you will make more than that uh, if you just sit and wait you're a bit like a kestrel really you're hovering over there waiting for the trade waiting for the trade waiting for the trade waiting for the trade and finally 
when you do take the trade, you want to get everything lined up as most favorably as you can to make the money on your account. And that means going back to here, choosing your assets sensibly and choosing the best, highest probability assets before you trade. Now let's look at another piece of uh, what I provide to you here, which is this. This is um, assuming you trade with MT4, then MT4 will allow you to copy details of each of your trades into here. Now for good or ill, this is a set of trades that I did. Uh, well, it says here, where are we? On the 28th of January 2016, here's a set of trades. I think I probably put on too many trades in that particular day. Um, but again, there you have it. Um, each to their own. I think that's too many and I would not particularly suggest it. However, as I said, each to our own on any given day. These trades all took place, as you can see, very early in the morning, all the way through these particular times. Um, and you can copy and paste all the trade log straight across from MT4 into here. It will tell you what asset you traded and what lot size. These are all, as you can see, those are all minis. They're not very big. They're 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0.2, and so on. Um, relatively small lot sizes. Uh, for an account, as I say, around the 10,000 mark. So each of these trades had an initial stop loss put on it and later during the trade, I will remove the stop loss. So the figure shown for the stop loss in here may not be accurate as to what I really did because the trade stop loss on this comes out as a result after the trade's finished. So this stop loss might have changed. My stop loss might have moved, into, moved to um, above the entry price to reduce the, the risk. And then these are my take profit figures down here. Okay. And then over here is actually the price that I closed out at. So I'll have had targets, which I may have met or may not have met. And I will have also taken the trade off if I felt like it was a good idea to take the trade off. And here it tells you the profit amount in my particular currency. Uh, so each trade has different profits. There was a losing trade there. At this particular point in time, it was a, I was on a bit of a roll. Um, not great amount of financial return off in any individual trade, but I had one loss and the rest of them were all winners. Um, trade times you can see down here. Now that's very important for reviewing because you may find that actually the trades that give you the best reward, like that's not too bad, 67, that took place in 34 minutes. Um, here's another one. It's, what's the next best one? Here we are. Was that 31? That took place in an hour and 52, so maybe not. But you've got a complete log of everything that happened. And then you can also go back and review each trade. Now, I do know that when I go back and review each trade, sometimes I say, yeah, I got that trade perfectly spot on. It's exactly what I should have done. And sometimes I look at it, and even if I made money, I may find that actually I was not happy with the trade afterwards because maybe my entry criterion weren't right. And therefore, um, I, I basically took the trade when I shouldn't have taken the trade. Now, the reason you should research that and look at it all is because it will teach you and inform you as to whether or not your trading style is good. Um, and if it is, that's great. And if it isn't, then you can review your own personal attitude and behavior when it comes to live trading. Live trading is always different from paper trading. Looking at things with hindsight is very, very easy. And you can say, I would have done that. But by live trading, you actually do things in the spur of the moment. And of course, price moves so fast, sometimes you don't get the entries you want. Sometimes you get the entry too early, sometimes too late. Sometimes you take the profit too early, sometimes too late. Sometimes you stop it out too late. Sometimes you stop it out too early. All of that is evident from looking at your own personal trading log. And you can read a screenshot here. What I do is I use a thing called Jing from TechSmith, and that allows you to take screenshots really quickly. And it also allows you to save it on your computer. Now what I do there is actually have a folder for each given day. So every single day you have a folder for the day 
and you do a screenshot of the particular asset that you traded and you save it onto that into that folder as a JPEG and you can then put the link through to it in here if you wanted and link the JPEG link through there so then this would be a complete record of everything that you've done also using Jing you can annotate your trade with your own personal comments about why you took the trade what you think about it why you think it was a good one uh, with my trading system I've also got the bull bear butterfly indicator so I might make a note about what position that was in I also have trade alerts and trade alerts will kick off and I'll make a note about what the trade alert was and I'll also make a note about whether I got the trade on the trade alert or whether I was too late um, and other comments like that. If we come down here a bit you can see some example um, here for example of a trade alert for example here the Aussie dollar on the 15 minute it was a sell trade alert it was to be sold at 1.5584 sorry 1.5584 um, lots now I wouldn't trade that much that would have been too big for me I would make sure I cut it back down again because this is obviously being worked out on a very tight stop so with this particular one had I taken it which I don't think I did did I take it oh I did take it I took it with very small amounts as you can see 0.1 and 0.2 um, and down here I put the stop price in at originally at 0.7171 and then I've got various targets along here target 1, target 2, target 3, target 4 on a 15 minute chart I typically target T3 or T4 sometimes even T5 um, because it's quite likely if you look at everything else and set it up right to start with that you will actually hit these targets and by taking a trade on the 15 minute or the 30 minute then you can increase the amount of your trade size for the trade it just tightens up your stop and uh, you either make it or you don't in this particular case you can see there are a number of different entries um, and over here my indicators come down now my bull bear butterfly line was below the red line that is very bearish and we came around here as these kicked over I got my first trade alert here which actually put me in pulled me back and then we got back in again and down we come and the trade was coming down but then I trailed the stop loss and here I've got my take profit targets and I review that and say decide whether or not I did that very well so in the event this trade turned out it put money in the bank and that's absolutely fine I believe I got into this a little bit early down here so I got it off this particular trade alert and ended up with this pullback which I had to wait my way through so clearly that was a bit more of a risk now looking back on it I can see that um, the bull bear butterfly line hadn't quite come down far enough hadn't got everything aligned up when I get here everything was lined up so this would have been a better entry point with more probability of less risk from the the pullback so with hindsight um, while I made money on it and that was very good trade um, as you can see my lot size was very small um, because part of me I think was thinking this is perhaps a little bit more risky than I ought to be taking so I shouldn't be taking this amount of value here volume here I should be taking it with a smaller amount um, and in fact I probably should have waited a little bit longer to take the trade okay so that's why you look at the trades afterwards and take screenshots because then you can be absolutely honest with yourself and you can review what you did and you can say okay that worked out all right and okay I had pretty much everything else in line um, but really my trade entry was a little bit wrong I should have been taking it on a different time so um, there you have it that's that's all about the trade calculator and how to use it and my thinking around risk and reward and trade setups and so forth uh, this is John Cato 30 minute trading and FX profit lab wishing you absolutely wonderful trading happy trading <laughs>